whether it be four wheel drive or two wheel drive, I don't even know my own slogan anymore. It's been so long. This is your all terrain nation. And then, uh, my name is David Boyd and, uh, we're going to start to show off hopefully better than I've just started it, but what is going on everybody? Uh, we got a little bit to talk about. It's been a few weeks since, uh, I've got to do this and I was trying to sneak this thing in between my busy life right now. I've, I've got all kinds of fun things going on, but I want to talk some mid-sized trucks because well, Lots happened since the last time we talked. I think Tim Esterthal was with us the last time we talked. And um, Tim's been on some press trips. And uh, I have a press trip coming up for the for uh, some mid-sized fun. And, um, yeah, we got a lot going on. So uh, hopefully you guys are uh, understand why we haven't been around here lately. But uh, we just got back from uh, Supercell Abration, a Bronco event in East Tennessee. And I've uh, been trying to get my life back together since being gone for five days. So, uh, yeah. It's been kind of crazy, and then I fly out Thursday for something. Anyways, what's up, Kevin? And uh, so Chevrolet's been crazy. Toyota's been really crazy here lately. They're just throwing out the teasers like like nothing. And then you got Ford over there with crickets. Like, what is going on? You know, there's rumors. Ford authorities got all these rumors going around that that something might be popping up. And speaking of that, let me pull them up real quick because. Well, you know, we're going to talk about the mid-sized trucks. They're a good resource for that. So uh, let me pull this up here real quick if I can find it. Anyways, hopefully your guys' Sunday is going, going better than mine. Mine, uh, Mine's been a little wonky. So uh, like I said, I was trying to get this 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 in here. Where's that? Where's that? Where's that? Ranger. There it is. All right. Ranger Raptor. There she is. Anyway, so. We'll get this thing started off with uh, some Ford news. Ford, uh, according to uh, Ford Authority, and I will bring this up so you guys can play along at home. Let's see. There it is. Bang. Uh, there we go. Well, maybe if I would uh, learn how to do this. It's been a while. So Ford Authority has uh, said, hey, Ford's going to bring this thing out, you know, this next month, May. May sometime in May. And uh, speculation is going crazy if you're on any of the forums. They all are going nuts. You know, why is it taking so long? You know, why does this, this, this? And you're like, hey, man, like PR has, there's a schedule to this. The truck has to be presented as final. PR has to get a hold of it, prepare themselves. And then they have to, uh, you know, invite journalists out to uh, to launch the thing. So, uh, yeah, I don't think people, I think in the day of Amazon where people just think, oh, there's things pop at my door. There'll be a Ford Ranger at my door. Well, no. But uh, I want to get into this just a little bit, and I will bring this up a little bit where you guys can see and play along at home. So as we await the debut of the next generation U.S. market Ford Ranger, which is set to happen next month, set to happen next month, Ford Authority exclusively reported yesterday. Uh, we've seen a number of uh, prototypes out there, and uh, let's hear this real quick. Let me pop this one up. So uh, it says it's going to debut in May. And uh, let's see, although the new next generation Ford Ranger debuted last year for certain international markets, basically the world, <laughs> except for the United States, these North America, these in North America are still waiting the arrival of the same size midsize pickup. Ford CEO Jim Farley previously mentioned that the Ranger and Ranger Raptor would launch in that particular uh continent this year in 2024 model year but didn't provide any sort of speculative timeline however sources familiar with the matter have told ford authority that the north american 2024 ford ranger will debut next month so ford authorities throwing their name out there and saying that is when it's going to be and well could be uh you know there's i we we in the industry get a privy to lots of things, but sometimes you're not supposed to talk about things. So we'll just leave it at that. And um, I'm excited for it. If this is true, I think that uh, for one, you guys know, I've been a big fan of this vehicle for quite a while. Um, I, I like the way it looks. I like the idea of what we're uh, potentially going to get in the 2.3 liter, 300 horsepower engine and a two seven potentially uh, in this thing, which is, uh, you know, 330 horsepower, which 330 horsepower in a little midsize normal truck, is ridiculous let alone then you go into the raptor and you're potentially what 392 horsepower is what the australian versions get uh no idea on us you know i know the european models get like they're knocked down to right around 300 it's ridiculous what that they don't get the full power of the the truck but this thing is going to be uh it's going to be pretty good for ford i think uh they've it's the first time in a long time they've properly had something brand new to, to debut yes you can say hey We've seen this truck across the global markets, yes, but 
it's not like the previous generation Ranger where we saw it for a long time in Australia. And then when Ford decided to play in this game again, the midsize truck game, that they just kind of plucked that here from here and we got it for a couple of years. Because if you think about what we got in 2019, I believe, um, that's uh, and, and then it was a pretty quick for us. So it'll be around for what, 19, 20, 21, what, four model years, something like that. So uh, pretty quick hit for a midsize truck. You know, it didn't last very long, but uh, it's because Ford had this one on the uh, the planning for the United States. And I'm, you know, once again, I'm pretty excited that we're going to see this truck here. Now, trim wise, I'll be curious to know what they're going to launch. You know, there's been a lot of rumors going around. You guys know I'm I'm with Allie. Number one, I can't sure I drink. But um, <laughs> but I'm I'm pretty excited, hopefully, to get a Ranger Raptor. Uh, I've been pushing hard for that. I want to review it. I want to do a proper review on it. I don't want to go take it like you're going to see everybody jumping these stupid things, you know, throwing them across creeks, whatever. And I know I want to what it's like to live with a vehicle. I want to do a proper review. And obviously, me and Kelly have a big off-road background, so we would definitely go to Windrock Park. We would try to see what it was like there. Um, but I want to give it a fair shake and I see, is it, is it a truck that I can live with? So that's my idea behind getting a Ranger Raptor. If I can so get one, you know, because I've, I've talked a, a lot about it, but there's no guarantees that I can be one of the early ones to get that. So fingers crossed that, uh, that'll happen. If not, you know, we may look at just a normal Ranger. We may, will we get the wild track version and will we get the wild track X version, which is like almost having a mini Sasquatch package. If you're familiar with the Bronco setups on a truck. So that would be pretty rad. Um, I mean, even their platinum, are we going to get the platinum? And I, I think, I think they really do need to bring the platinum to the United States because um, people want, they want high end stuff. Now they don't, you know, the little trucks, even trucks in general, are not thought of as just, you know, to things to move. They're not a vehicle just to go move furniture around or, you know, do work. They're thought of as the family cruiser. They're the family truckster now. And uh, so I think people would be happy, especially if you're in more of a uh, downtown situation where parking, you know, spaces are limited or size is limited. And you want that truck feel, but yet you need to haul, haul four or five people uh, comfortably. I think a mid-sized truck like that in the Platinum Series would be pretty good. I'm curious uh, curious what you guys think about this, so please throw some comments in there and uh, if you are interested in the Ford. But according to them, this thing is coming. You know, We do know that this will be made at the Michigan Assembly Plant, so um, my Bronco people should love that. And uh, they're currently making the Ranger there. But uh, this thing's been – we've seen enough of this thing floating around you know, this, once again, this is an XLT, I believe is what it says there. Yeah, XLT on the side. Not sure if I'm a big fan of that. You know, the the little wind, well, I don't know what they would call that exactly, a louver of some sort. Not sure I'm exactly a fan of that. But overall, it's a good looking truck. Um, I would ditch these. Um, I'm going to ditch these uh, mud flaps pretty quickly because, I, you know, I just don't like the way they look. But uh, that's pretty much on any truck now that I, I would do that for. But uh, let's go back i want to go back to back to this one here because as we uh kind of in the the ranger talk there is a new uh color supposedly in town and they're calling this brown now i do not think this is brown i think this is a it's a dark green and i did a video on this uh, a couple days ago about this and uh maybe you've seen it maybe you haven't but um I uh I think this is a dark like a dark forest green if I remember right but you can see there this these photos were caught near the proving grounds look at all the dirt in the wheel wells I love the fact that they're out there having fun with these things testing them out of course it's going to get the new BF Goodridge uh, KO3 tire which is what's on there right now so the sidewalls on those tires are a little bit meatier uh, you're still going to get that classic KM or KO series uh, tread pattern, but they've been trying to trying to make the sidewalls a little bit meatier because it's a good all terrain tire. But I think Nitto and some of these other guys out there have um, have uh, kind of taken this segment and really pushed it further in the all terrain segment and almost like a hybrid anymore. They these tires are not really like a what I would consider a all terrain. I I kind of consider these. Uh, what is it Goodyear was calling theirs a multi-terrain or something like that you know it's like mud tire but it's only they're playing with you but it's uh these things are pretty nice but the green of this thing i believe this is green i've seen this color like i said i did a video on this color uh, a viewer sent in some photos of this vehicle they saw in arizona so it was that down at the proving grounds and it's a pretty green and it's kind of made me if i were to be able to get one of these it's kind of made me uh which color do i get 
because I'm I, I'm pretty set on Code Orange. I like the launch color. I was able to uh, me and Kelly were able to drive a Code Orange um, Bronco Raptor this past week, and Kelly really liked it a lot. I was uh I I'm so so on it. I've never been a big fan. I think it's too big, um, personally, and I honestly I think it's kind of too heavy. But I think uh, this truck should be a little bit lighter, and I think uh, having that same three-liter twin-turbo engine in this thing is going to be a little rocket ship. So I'm pretty excited by that. But uh, let's see. What, what's going on, guys? Let's see. Ranger or Fossil says, uh, Ranger, Lariat, Trimmer, or GMC Canyon Denali are my possibilities. Uh, both good trucks, and we're going to talk about the GMC here in a few minutes. Um, but let's see. The other big news coming out, and uh, let me pull this away so I can lo reload this thing up for you guys, is the uh, Chevy Colorado. Now, this thing has been out for quite a while, so I don't, I don't want to, um, I don't want to hype this thing, but we got something else coming up. Let me pull this, this photo up here, and I will share this, because this is, uh, you know, we've, I've done a few videos on this, this particular truck, and it is, uh, it's pretty rad itself. So this is the Bison. So round up. So there is your bison. Now GM is slowly, you know, peeling the wrapper off of this thing. And of course, there was a uh, GM launched the or when they were launching the Chevrolet Colorado a couple of weeks ago. I know TFL was out there. Uh, I don't think Tim Tim did this ride, but it was cool. They went out where they drove the Mint 400, and uh, they were ripping these things through the desert. And GM had one of these out here where the journals could get firsthand, kind of see what was on it. And it has been confirmed that this thing is going to get 315, 70, 17 tires. So kind of a 35 inch tire, much like they, it's basically a 34 and a half, I think, but they just throw it up to 35 inch, but it's what come on the, the Bronco. So uh, I can't, I can't complain about it, but this thing is going to be a rad little vehicle. Now I'm still hearing reports that this thing is still going to get the basic, the high output tune of of what is it a little two seven four cylinder in that and that bums me out for this truck man gm has to they got to throw their balls out there a little bit and if you're gonna especially a, a ultimate version of this truck in this truck you're probably talking 70 grand for this truck i i have no idea i haven't even looked at what their previous versions cost but this thing is going to be expensive and i don't know i don't know if my budget's gonna if i had to choose i this or the Ranger Raptor, and I will say I have leaned more towards the Chevrolet design of uh, the aggressive look for their kind of desert off-road runner than the Ranger Raptor. I love the Ranger Raptor. I think the Ranger Raptor for me, performance wins out, and you guys know if you've been a part of the show for a while, I always talk about I always want the maximum horsepower engine that I can get or the most, the biggest engine that I can get, so that's why I would lean right now towards the Ranger, but this thing uh, getting 35s I think it was an answer to Ford, you know, hey, we know that you've got your uh, your Raptor version coming. We're going to try to one-up you with tire size and uh, just make this thing look uh, a beefy, desert-running, you know, multi-off-road, we'll say, vehicle. And I'm pretty excited by this. We will see more. Um, May 31st is what we're hearing the launch of this thing's going to be. And once again... I'm not, I, GM hasn't ever reached out to me for press stuff, so it's kind of a bummer, but I would love to be a part of uh, testing this vehicle out. So, hey, GM, I know you guys watch a lot of this kind of content. Reach out to me. I'd love to uh, give some feedback on this thing. But I will say right from the get-go, now this this photo, it doesn't look too digital uh, it's on yours, but the bumper, that bumper is bitching. I love that bumper. That thing is rad. Now, they with the Bisons, they always partner with, what is it, AEV? or av uh, aev I, I forget what the the company i never remember it but uh that bumper is rad of course you can see it's winch capable you do not see a winch in there we do get some tow hooks so uh make those uh taco boys jealous over there that you got some nice red tow hooks on there it looks like full skid down there uh i love these wheels those wheels are rad man i love those things look like they're a full beadlock capable wheel which i would assume Look at all the uh, the lugs going around there. Nothing about the the headlights look too much different for me. Now it does have that classic uh, hole through the Chevy badge for the uh, the ZR2. Um, so you know this little four cylinder is going to need all the cooling it can get. It looks like there's some louver vents up here as well. A big bulge, kind of that classic ZR2 bulge that you, we've seen for their V8s. But it looks like they're doing that for the the Colorado there with the the Bison, and that's pretty pretty cool man i i must admit this side profile of this thing that looks really good 
Um, I've never been a big fan of of their factory rock rails, their rock sliders. Uh, but I will say they generally offer more protection the way GM does that than any other brand does for a factory rock rail. I'm just not a fan. I I want I like I like my rock rails to poke out a little bit to keep me if I'm ever in tight quarters like with trees stuff like that keep me from blowing out my windows if I can. But those are uh, very nice protection. So we're gonna it looks like get full front bumper side protection and i would only imagine there is a rear bumper around there as well though we cannot see the photos that that were uh revealed of this thing does not show anything about the rear but um i think this is going to be a hit for gm and the the midsize you know me and tim have talked about this on the show many times the midsize truck battle is is if you like midsize trucks and especially if you're not really particularly brand loyal and i'm not really brand loyal to any midsize truck but I think competition is great for for the uh, the people buying the vehicles. Now we can all fuss and bitch about the price of how these things have just gone up and up and up in price, but you know that's the world we live in right now. But um, I think if this thing if this thing is priced under what Ford does for the uh, the Ranger Raptor, I think that uh, my, a lot of people might be leaning towards the Chevrolet. And of course, you know there's going to be I'm sure some AT4X, the GMC version of this as well. I'm sure they'll do because they like to do bison products over there or their equivalent um, working with AEV. But um, I like this thing. I think the wheels on this look much better than what we've seen for the Ranger. Um, once again, the, the front bumper, this looks really cool. And that does look to be a full metal bumper. I like how they've integrated the fog lights in there as well. Uh, nice little touch. Glad they're not up here somewhere. Are, are these actual vents? Are these actual uh, breathable vents that can you know, go through there? That's uh that's something a lot of the mid-sized trucks have been taking kind of heat on here lately is they look like they're racy, but nothing it doesn't do anything. Um I would be curious about what do you guys do you guys think that when we, the de debut of this thing happens in uh, May, do you think that they're sticking with the same 274 cylinder? Or do you think they try to do something with maybe a 36? Was I believe it was a 36 they were in the last Colorado, but do you, do you, do you think that GM would approach it as the last hurrah? Kind of much like what Dodge is doing with their Challenger Charger program of the last hurrah with the V8. And I think it'll be the last hurrah that we see with the uh, Mustang in a V8. Now, we, you know, I have a Mustang uh, on being built, uh, should be built in June. And I wanted to experience that vehicle as one of the last hurrahs of the V8 in this. Do, do they give their audience what they want? GM historically, I will say over the past 15 years, they seem to like give you the appearance of something and then they don't give you the performance of it. Now with the full size Silverado uh, ZR2, you know, you are getting a big, what is it? Six, two in that thing. So you're getting a big brawny uh, V8 in that, but they never went full. They didn't go full like Raptor did, you know, Raptor, even with the, the, the twin turbo V6 that they put in that thing just seems like you're getting a lot more performance and, uh, or TRX, you know, where TRX just threw a supercharger on that Hemi and what seven seven oh seven something like that horsepower will will they attempt to give us something you know worth buying in this uh ultimately though people buy a vehicle because they like the way they look i think in this case in mid-size trucks performance is secondary uh as long as it's got fairly you know good horsepower and i think what the two seven high outputs at 310 horsepower do you look at this with 310 maybe maybe we get 320 uh with this version do you look at that and go, well, Ford's already beating them with 392 potential horsepower in the Ranger Raptor. Uh, ultimately, I think it's going to be a good battle, and I cannot wait to do some uh, time in this vehicle. Um, but till I get to, I can't give you my driving impression. So let's pull this thing out here. Let's uh, let me pull up the next the next business, as it were. I want to talk, uh, since Mr. Estrethal is not on here today. I want to talk about his, uh, he just got back from a, a, a GMC drive where, and they had a lot of fun. I am super jealous of this drive they did because they were in North Carolina, I believe, and they were giving their little GMCs hell mud pits and just having all kinds of fun, really off-roading that. I believe it was the AT fours that they were out there with. They might've had the whole selection. I, I, since I didn't get invited, I was kind of like, meh poo poo on this but i will i will gladly share tim's uh thoughts on this thing but tim did a really good thing with the uh you know it was brought i think he was the first to break the story about the the headlights in this thing are all auto you know you can always click them to auto but it's all in the digital screen there's no more there's no more stock there's no more 
thing on the side where you can turn your off, you know, your headlights on and off. And uh, Tim actually got behind the wheel and did a video on on this. And I, I think in the video, there was a couple things that uh, he was surprised that didn't bother him ultimately. And I think once you own the vehicle for for a few months, probably you would never. I don't in my Bronco. I don't use it has the auto feature on so they just come on and i don't ever think about it even the the uh, auto beam the high beam assist i just it does its thing and i i don't worry about it anymore so uh our, our headlight control is the thing that we uh we all are are upset that that we're losing but uh i will post this i'm gonna post this in the comments here and if you want to play along at home you you can you want to read tim's thoughts and jill's thoughts on this thing because they were both at this event and um, I like I said, I for one, was kind of jealous, kind of jealous that they uh they got to go, but as you can see, here's here's at night. Look at the 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 gauge cluster in this thing. G GM, I will say, they do a nice. I love the uh, the font choices they use. It just looks high end. Um, I've got the audio muter right now, but you can see in the dark that thing really lights up. Look at this screen. Now this is with his GoPro or whatever. So. A little bit blinding, but at night, look at all the uh, everything looks uh, pretty nicely lit up. Even the uh, the four wheel drive system, which um, I'm still not sold on where they've put that. I wish they would put the shifter more towards uh, the driver, and I think they talked about that in this video. But where are you guys at with um, with the uh, the GM system here? Do you like their layout? Are you um, are you just kind of like iffy about it? Um, I I've since I haven't I've experienced Ford's version of of the sync four i'm pretty happy with sync four um gms uh, they put everything behind a paywall now so you'll get all the all the fun all the all the sign identifications will be in the dash till uh three months later when that subscription runs out and then you want to pay for it but it's still it annoys you because it pops up speedometer but it doesn't give you the actual speed in the dash uh, they make you uh, it just they aggravate you purposely hoping you'll buy their their subscription service but um that truck, um, you'll see it. I, I'm not sure when the, um, I think it's this week. It might be Tuesday when the embargoes on there and driving impressions of this vehicle. And I think you're going to see some really cool videos, probably from across the board, from TFL to um, to pickup truck plus SUV talk across. The, I think everybody's going to have some nice uh, nice videos on that. And I'm for one, once again, a little pouty. Didn't get invited to that one, but that's okay. We're earning our way there, aren't we? Um, but I'm curious so far, that's, that's three trucks that, um, that we, uh, we've got coming in May and will Toyota jump in in May. Now I've heard rumors that they're going to, they're doing a launch in one of, uh, the most beautiful places in the United States that you could ever do it. And that's about all I can say about that is, but I'm, um, uh, I'm, uh, pretty excited for for the toyota now let me pull let me pull this up here um get to their instagram because they've been toyota's been been teasing the crap out of this this thing and just having fun with it and i've said it many times i'm happy to see that that they're usually the import brands aren't as playful so i'm happy that they're letting the uspr kind of kind of have some fun with it just start teasing the thing and something they dropped this week was uh, pretty interesting to me, or I guess it was last week. Now, I was out, I was not able to cover this when they did it, but is this right here, this speaker, the removable speaker. Now, Jeep did this with the uh, Gladiator, had it in the back. It was always on charge, and you could pull it out if you're at your campsite or whatever, a little Bluetooth speaker, uh, which was pretty interesting. But to me, they I, I like the fact that Toyota's kind of, it's a visible, so it's a, you know, it's not something hidden behind the seat that you would kind of forget about. This thing's going to be out front where you can uh, grab it. It's handy. You don't have to get behind the seats to uh, to grab it to use it. You know, kind of out of sight, out of mind, in my opinion. I like the fact that uh, they're partnered with JBL for this little portable speaker. Now, only time will tell how well this thing actually sounds. That's that's the the bad thing about these these little speakers. Sometimes sometimes they don't sound great. And how does it interact with the uh, the audio system in general? And two, will we see this pop in the Tundra and Sequoia down the road? Because that would be actually pretty cool. But as you can see here, here's a little bit more of the uh, the hood. You know, they've done their best at teasing this thing. Um, once again, the JBL, the speaker there. Let's see. Let's see one another one of their teasers. 
because uh, they're having fun with it. Since we haven't talked in a while, this is the headlights, the Trail Hunter headlights. I can't remember if me and Tim talked about this, if this had dropped then or not. But uh, I'm over Easter eggs, guys. I'm so over this, especially when you they're not really Easter eggs anymore. You just blatantly throw your, throw your name or Toyota all over the place. Um, I like kind of how Jeep was doing it where they're just little hints of things like little, you just look around or even the Bronco. I think Bronco went over the top with them, but I'm just so over this. But I think those lights look good. And this looks to be kind of a gold gold color that I believe we saw with the uh, the bumper. I believe this was probably the same vehicle. And um, where are you guys at with the uh, with Toyota right now? I think what we saw with the the um, here we go. I think what we saw with the those patent photos, I think that was a big oops. And I think that's pretty much can been confirmed. Everything we see here that that definitely we're getting that vehicle. But uh, it's definitely going to look somewhat like a smaller version of the Tundra, which I'm always concerned about because I know with Nissan, they uh, they did that with the Frontier. And I'd said for a long time, I did not think Nissan was going to do that. You know, Nissan, especially they the Frontier is kind of the, of trucks. It's their halo truck. It's the one they sell a lot of. So I always thought they would take and it would show us a little bit where they were going in design. And well, you know, it is slightly different. But if you get in the interior of that truck, it feels like it just feels like the uh, the the Titan. And nothing wrong with the Titan. When I, me and Kelly leased a Titan for three years for a long term review vehicle uh, back in 17. I, the, the interior is what allowed me to feel comfortable leasing that vehicle because I thought it was nice, but I don't feel like Nissan's really stepped it forward. So will this with, uh, you know, Tacoma, will Toyota go out of their way to uh, make this thing still feel special? Because, you know, you look at the current Tacoma. Now, it is very dated, but the, it was it was pretty for for their designs. You know, it wasn't completely Tundra. You know, the Tundra came out, what, 09, somewhere in there. And the the current uh, Tacoma was 16, I think, when they did the their changeover in that. So they kind of left them be a little bit different. But we're starting to see where the trend is to uh, just m make a mini version of your full size truck. And uh, does this hurt their sales? I mean, Toyota is known for quality, so I think that's their saving grace. But I'll be honest, like this TRD Pro in the in the tailgate, I'm not a big fan of that. I'm honestly, I'm I'm kind of over stamping in the tailgates the your name of your vehicle. Now, I did like when we were seeing the the um, <clears throat> I liked when we saw them doing this in the the side of the beds, and uh, I guess I, I can probably pull one of these things up real quick. Let me let me remove this, and uh, remember, I'm a one man show here. Oh man, let's see, Toyota Tacoma. I actually may have some, uh, I know me and Kelly did some, we did some time in this vehicle last year, but let's see images, but I liked how they, I liked how they stamped, st stamped it in their vehicles. Um, come on, Google. Don't fail me. I need a quick, I need a quick photo. There we go here. Maybe. Yeah. So let me add this to the stream. Oh, come on. Nobody likes that fact that I have a uh, ad blocker on here. <laughs> here we go. The drive. Here, let me pop this up. But I like this is, but for Toyota, I wish they would get back to this. I I like I like this quite a bit. And uh, maybe add to the stream. There we go. So I liked when they did this into the side of it. Uh, I think in the uh, when they stamped it in the tailgate, it doesn't. I'm I'm a big. I need balance. And I think the way they did that big TRD and then made pro a little bit smaller from what we're seeing on Instagram, that doesn't, this right here, that doesn't work for me as much. I, I just don't feel balanced about it. It just, it would annoy me, honestly, not to say that that would hold me back from buying this truck. Cause it wouldn't. Um, I think, uh, I think if, if depending on when they launch this vehicle, you know, we may, we may flip the Ranger into this, who knows? Uh, but I have a feeling we're going to see this truck probably on sale around December of this year. I think they'll launch it. They'll launch it probably in June. I'm going to say June is when they're actually going to launch this thing. But they sure love teasing the hell out of this. And if they if they were to, if I could, if I, you know, our plan, our long term plan right now is we've got the Mustang, 
The Mustang should hold us over for a couple months and flip into hopefully a Ranger of some sort, or could be could be the Tacoma here, depending on who who gets them out first. But you know, this is the midsize king. This is Toyota. They 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 own the segment, and, I, and they don't just own the segment. They own the segment, man. Like two hundred twenty thousand sales a year versus most other most others eighty to a hundred. I mean, that's that's. It's not even close. So does a redesign this thing making uh being smaller version of a Tundra, would that deter you? And will we get the biggest thing? The question we want to know in this is, do we get a six cylinder or were they going to go down to the four cylinder? Now they've talked iForce Max. Yes. But in a pro version, you know, the framing Toyota went, most people have been doing this, but Toyota, because of their global chassis, they've had a few different truck chassis they've used. But they've they've preached now that the the Tundra and Toyota Tacoma they're they're all going to share the same platform now. Now it's you know it is slight variations on it. But does that lend itself where they could drop in a could they do a high performance TRD Pro and really make TRD Pro a a kind of Raptor Ranger Ranger Raptor name plate or ZR2 name plate? Like TRD Pro is always giving you a little extras, but it's never for the price they charge. It's never been enough in my opinion. Now, once again, Toyota quality makes up for all that. But with the big boys, the big three trying to play or the big two trying to play in this field and get strong in it, does that does that make them react and put that uh the the twin turbo V6 in it, the three five? Would you would you be interested in seeing that three five, which makes 400 horsepower in this this little truck? I would for I would I would love to see that that motor in this though i do think we'll get a daily use four cylinder out of this thing with the uh the iforce max and i've been a big fan of theirs i mean kelly did a review of the new tundra and sequoia which share the same same engine it um it will get up and go there's no doubt about it the don't let that 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 fool you because the way that the way toyota is doing it in their truck lines is it's not about fuel economy it's about bringing a smaller displacement engine bringing up two levels for torque you know, most most trucks aren't aren't needing torque. They're not going down the drag strip, so they need short bursts of torque for pulling or whatever you're doing. And I think uh, I think Toyota's hit the nail on the head with this one. I like their setup, and I will be excited to uh, to get to uh, play with this vehicle. But as we uh, let's see, let me get back to some of their other teasers. There, you know, all started with this one right here where uh, they had the Brazilian patent office and all that. And, and once again, that one, that stamping doesn't bother me as bad, but is what it is. You know, they teased us here. My buddy Tim thought this was still a, uh, he thought for sure it was the the Tundra. And I mean, him had some private conversations on that. We fought about it a little bit. But where are you guys at with the uh, with these these big trucks coming up? It's May. And do we see, like, Truck month is May now going to be truck month coming up with uh, the potential as Ford Authority is reporting. We got Ranger popping up. Chevrolet has confirmed that May 31st will be the uh, ZR2 Bison. And does Toyota jump in there and try to steal some uh, some love, some PR love and, you know, battle? You know, this is they're all they're all it's it's the David and Goliath story, man. Or it's it's like Godzilla versus King Kong now. It's it's who is going to win this battle, and I'm pretty excited to buy it. And uh, I want to say thank you to everybody popping in here today. I know this was kind of a surprise show. I had honestly, I have a free hour. I've got to go here in a little bit. I've got to take my daughter to softball practice and all kinds of stuff. And uh, my life is crazy. I haven't in two weeks. I don't think I've had any downtime, any downtime. So uh, I wanted to talk midsize trucks with you guys just a little bit as we could. So in the comments, let me know where you at, where you guys at with the. Um, the um the vehicles right now if you were having driven any of these say you haven't driven any are you brand loyal enough or you would you convert over to a different truck is one of these that we've seen tease so far is one of these uh swaying you maybe away from where uh, you normally would go um you know i'm i've been i grew up in a gm household and so uh you know i i i my dad always gets excited if i have gm product to bring over there um but you know, the Ford to me right now has just done the most exciting stuff in 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 all of cars and trucks. Um, that's why you see us cover the brand so much right now is because I really do think that they're doing, you know, Chevrolet's killed the Camaro. You know, the Mustang's still here. Even though Mustang sales, if you look at them, they're under, 
I want to say 20,000 a year or something. I forget what they are. It's, it's pretty low for considering the heritage of that brand. Uh, you know, we're losing V8s like crazy. Uh, Dodge, who knows what's what's really their future? Do, do they go EV and then nobody buys it? Who knows? Uh, Ram, Ram's got a supposedly Dakota 1200 coming out that will not be. I'm, I'm telling you this now, it will not be a mid sized truck like you think. It's going to be more of the Maverick, it's going to be a unibody vehicle. That I think, I think I'm seeing a lot of Mavericks floating around. I'm seeing a lot of companies using them, advanced auto parts, places like that are using them as their little haulers, you know, parts haulers and stuff like that. And I think that's a perfect use for that vehicle. And it's going to get, you know, it's going to get good fuel economy. And um, that's the next thing Chevrolet and GMC, the fuel economy on these numbers on these trucks have been pretty bad. Whew, Ford. You you better you know you better raise the bar and I think they're going to with the the two three we do know that two three in the current Ranger does pretty good does it get better in this new Ranger and where would Toyota be in all this do they find the balance for fuel economy and torque horsepower it's yet to be seen but I think we live in some exciting times so whether it be two wheel drive four wheel drive it only matters what you drive if we're talking mid sized trucks right. Sorry for this uh, quick one, but uh, not all I had time for. Peace, everybody. Love y'all.